Hi there, Rachel Chase here, and in this series of videos, we'll explore concepts of probability. A few definitions we'll need to progress are the following. The probability of any given event is given by the likelihood that it will occur. So in other words, how often it occurs divided by what the total number of possibilities are. So notation here is very similar to what you may have seen in an algebra course before. It looks almost like a function, but we would read this as the probability of an event, in this case we'll call it event E, occurring, and that's how we set it up. The event, of course, is what you're interested in the probability for. So, for example, if I asked you what's the probability that when you flip a coin it lands on heads, your event would be heads versus tails. So we can say this is the interest to us. Our sample space is a comprehensive list of every single event that could potentially happen. Now, one thing to keep in mind is events, there might be compounded amounts of those. So it could take on separate things. An example space is a comprehensive list. of all outcomes, whether they are likely to occur or not. So in the case of flipping a coin again, what's the list of all outcomes? Either heads or tails, because those are the only two things that could happen. Let's take a basic example. A survey of 500 Math 015 students reveal that 289 have not taken a math course in more than four years. Find the probability that a randomly selected math 015 student has not taken a math course in more than four years. So we're looking for the number of students who have not taken math in more than four years. According to this survey, that's 289, and divide by the total number of people surveyed, in this case, 500. Now, our rule of thumb when dealing with probabilities is a terminating decimal, or something that's rounded, depending on what you're asked for, or of course a reduced fraction. Now, a fraction like this, you can check but will not reduce. Um, feel free to use technology for it. You're more than welcome to use if, because of the graphing calculators, there's a math fraction redu reduction key. Now, in terms of when do we round, when do we don't, honestly, it really varies question to question. If you're curious to find out, I guess, percentage-wise, that's more like when we would turn things into decimals. Now, in terms of homework and stuff like that, be sure to read the little blue text under your online system to make sure that you're following the rules they set out. So if we were to round this, and actually we don't have to round it, uh, this is a terminating decimal, 0.578. So what might this suggest to us? Well, convert that to a percentage to get a little more information. That is approximately 57.8%. So that means that over half of the students in Math 015 have not taken math in over four years. So why would you use the decimal or percentage as opposed to fraction? Depending on how good you are at I guess just looking at fractions, you may not necessarily recognize that that's more than half. Obviously, we should, but you know it's it's easier to see that with a decimal as opposed to a fraction. Consider the sample space of flipping a coin. If you just flip that coin once, we said earlier, what could happen? We could either have heads or we could have tails. Those are the only two possible outcomes. Now, if we were sitting in a classroom, what I would want you to think about here is what would happen if you flipped that coin 10 times? So if you sat here and flipped your coin 10 times, is it guaranteed that half of the time it will be heads, half of the times it will be tails? Technically, no. So if you have some time here, I would recommend you pause this video and start by flipping a coin 10 times and look at the results. Maybe you end up with, I don't know, head, head, tail, head, 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 just making some stuff up here, tail, tail, 
tail. So if we do a quick count, we have a 60-40 split. So let's say that that was our sample. Now, what's the difference between us saying conduct an experiment versus what's the sample space? Now, there is a minute difference here, and that's we deal primarily in theoretical probability. However, in application, your probabilities are generally based on experiments. So in theory, 50% of the time, the coin should land on heads, 50% of the time it should land on tails. But in practice, that may not necessarily be what happens. So what could you say? So long term, if you conducted an experiment to the size that, you know, your sample gets big, obviously a sample of 10 is not indicative of what will happen forever. But let's say you flip this coin, I don't know, 100 times then, you know, maybe you'll be teetering like 49%, 51%. And what you'll see is the more times you flip that coin, the closer and closer that your data will get to approximately 50-50. So again, in theory, it will always be 50-50. But as an experiment, remember this is in practice, what might happen? It will teeter-totter back and forth. A little bit more in terms of what we should know about probability. When, when you hear probability, there's three special cases, I guess we can call them. 50-50 is like we saw with heads or tails. That means that your probability is split perfect, 50-50. Impossible probability is something that can never happen. And if it can never happen, then the probability that it occurs is equal to zero. Certain probability, on the other hand, means it must happen. So there's nothing else that can occur. That situation must happen. And that would be a probability of 1. So one example of a certain probability is for any student taking this STATS 1 course, the only way, so the only way for a certain probability to happen would be if you looked at something like for every single student in this STATS 1 course, to pass the course, you must take every single exam, right? So I'm not saying that you have to necessarily pass every exam. Obviously, that's important. But there is no way for someone to pass this course without taking every single exam, because that's one of the course requirements. Next up, let's talk about complement. So the complement of any given probability, so we read this as the probability of event A, we denote that same notation, but we just put a line over it. Oops, it's a little exaggerated. Now, what does the probability represent? The probability of the complement is equal to 1 minus the probability of the original event occurring. So for example, if I say the probability it will rain today is equal to 0.2, then what's the probability that it does not rain? So we would denote that same thing like before, the line over top. That's 1 minus 0.2, which is 0.8. So you'll notice here that if we add them back together, they have to equal 1. And that's one of the requirements of probability complements. So any time you add complements together, they must give you back 1. In a survey of 50 Delaware Tech students, 33 of them said that they are already registered for the fall semester. What's the probability that a randomly selected Delaware Tech student is not registered? So they told us how many are registered. How do we find out how many have not? There's two different approaches to this, but let's go with the most straightforward here. If we know the probability that they are registered is 33 out of 50, the complement of that, so the probability that they are not registered, which you could also just write as not registered instead of using the overline, is equal to 1 minus 33 over 50. Now, the shortcut for something like this, because if you're doing them by hand, you'd have to get a common denominator, would be to find the missing, right? So 50 minus 33 is going to give us 27. Oh, 27, 17. So it's 17 over 50. So again, check your work here. Why does that work out? Because if you were to find a common denominator, this would be 50 over 50. So again, 50 minus 33, that would be all over 50. So if you're wondering where that comes from, it's from this component here. Now, 
and if we're curious for that as a decimal, that ends up being 0.34, which is 34%. So again, depending on the context, depending on what you're looking for, a decimal may be more applicable in a case like this. In our next video, we will explore using the addition rule of probability. Thanks for watching.